All right. So the only thing that is left to rig for our character's accessories to be complete is its belt. So we have the actual belt mesh, we have a few pouches, and we have a belt buckle. So what we're going to do is uh, first let's hide the buckle in all of the pouches. We don't need to see those. We're going to focus on this guy first. And obviously, uh, the easy way to go about it uh, would be just to, again, bind it to the main deformation hierarchy and transfer uh, the weight map values from the torso of the character onto the belt and we would be done with it. And actually for this particular character that might actually be the best uh, path to take because um, the belt is not really complex and he's made of leather seemingly which means that he needs to deform a little bit but <clears throat> in the spirit of learning a little bit more about other ways of doing this I'm gonna show you a different technique that becomes very useful when you have accessories such as this one that have to be rigid and uh, they they would need to not deform with the character because if I if I took the deformations path and my torso really had some extreme poses you would see the belt stretch as it tries to blend between the hip area and the torso area so you will see a bit of stretching here and maybe you want to keep it as rigid as possible and uh, instead instead some ha have some um, minor controls to to move different parts of it if necessary so that's what we're going to do uh, again we're doing this just to practice a a new technique that we can apply to our character's belt okay so let's begin and the first thing we'll need is uh, everything is going to be based on using a couple of curves to create a, a ring rig that actually uh, I do use a lot for things like these. Okay, so let's go into our gears, rig, accessories, and we have all this stuff. Let's organize this a little bit better. So let's add a couple of group locators and I'm going to call this one group center buckles and I'm gonna move into it all these guys okay and this one I'm going to call group center belt okay so this is going to contain all of our rig for the belt. So I'm going to start by creating um, my my curve. So let's create a uh, new mesh item and bring it into our group. It's an empty mesh item. And I'm going to go into a top view. And let's make this... Uh, wireframe for now and I'm going to uh, turn on my snaps and snap to the grid okay and there's my center so let's bring our curve tool and I'm gonna click on this point on the grid then on this one then on this one and on this one and I'm gonna close the curve okay now that doesn't really give us a circle so let's add a few more points to it and uh, let's click here you have to select the first vertex first so you can create that point now select the next vertex so the next place I click on is going to be uh, a vertex after the one I have selected so let's let's click there um, now I'm going to click on this guy and click here and click on this guy and click over there. Okay. This guy moved. So let's move him over there. All right. Now I'm going to turn off snaps and I am going to select this point. Uh, actually, well, I can't do that right now because I'm still in the uh, curve create mode. So let's get out of that. 
and I'm going to go into vertex component mode. Normally you would you would edit the um, the curve by going into polygon mode and selecting it and reactivating the curve tool. But in this case, I'm just going to directly select the vertices. And in this case, I want these four. And I'm going to scale them up until I have as close as I can to a circle. You don't have to worry about being incredibly precise. And I guess that pretty much does it. It's not the best circle, but it's going to be perfect for our purposes. Let's go back to perspective view. Okay, so now that we have this, what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to try to place it around the, um, the belt of the character. Okay, so let's go and move it up. Okay. And now I'm going to go into polygon component mode, select all of it, and I am going to scale it. Well done. Ah, you know what? This is giving Modo a few problems. So I'm going to go back to my top view, find it. And Okay, good. Ah, oh, there it is. I'm going to select the circle in polygon component mode and then scale it up because uh, it seems Moto didn't like the small scale too much. There we go. Let's go to perspective view. Oh. It's up there. Let's move it down. There you are. That's why we couldn't find it. Okay, so I'm going to scale it up. Let's go to a shaded view. Uh, let's go back to item mode. And I'm going to Uh, looks like uh, the center stayed down there, so let's fix that. Select, uh, I mean edit. We're going to do a center uh, center to bounding box center. So now the center is placed at the center of the bounding box of my curve. Let's, let's move it forward up a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it a bit. like so let's bring it down and now I'm gonna scale it to fit the uh, the character a little bit better but I always do that in uh, component mode you don't want to do that at the item level so it looks like it needs to be wider on the x-axis so let's do it a little bit wider kind of like so And uh, a little bit narrower on this axis. And I'm going to move it locally a little bit to the back and scale it a little bit more. I know I'm being kind of picky, but there you go. That's what we want. So let's call this mesh curve, center, belt, riders. I'm going to show you what a rider is in a second. Now I'm going to duplicate it. Okay. 
and I'm going to take the duplicate, let's hide the original for a second, go back into component mode, polygon component mode, select the curve, and I'm going to scale it inwards. So I have it in there, okay, inside of the character. And uh, that's it. And let's rename this guy to belt up vectors. All right. So now that we have that, what would be next? I need to create a few um, controls for my belt that I'm going to use to deform it. And I'm going to need also a few uh, objects that are going to be constrained to the curve. And the basic idea behind this is, let me select it here so you can, you can better see it, is that I'm going to have several locators attached to this curve and those locators are the ones that are going to be deforming the mesh of the belt okay so that's what we're going to uh, to do so let me create a new locator I'm going to bring it into the belt group and I'm going to match its position to the curve right here just so that I have it right there in the middle and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller but not too much for now because I need to be able to see this guy okay and let's call this guy parent center belt controls <coughs> sorry okay so now that uh, we have these guys why do I have two of them well because the locators are going to be constrained on this path are going to be flipping all over the place unless we give them something to look at and we're going to have another set of locators on the second path that are going to be the up vectors for the first guys to use okay so that's what we're going to do um, how many locators do I need well obviously it sort of depends on uh, on how complex your mesh is and uh, stuff like that so I'm going to give it a uh, eight locators so that I have a good amount of resolution when it comes to deforming the belt. Uh, again, it, it can be up to debate how many you actually need. But let's let's start with eight and see uh, what happens. So I'm going to take this guy and duplicate it once. And let's take the duplicate and rename it to uh, constraint. Uh, belt right there okay zero one and let's make the size even smaller let's say point one uh, actually point zero five let's say okay that's fine and we're gonna duplicate this guy until we have eight of those one two three four five six seven eight Okay, and I'm just gonna f rename them to use my naming convention, not Moto's. Unfortunately, M Moto doesn't know that my suffix, my numbered suffix, is what I would like to have in the name, and then he creates his own. So, creates a little bit more work. I'm sorry, am I having a little cold this week? Anyway, there they are. Now we're going to take these guys and we're going to constrain them to this curve. Okay, so let's make sure compensation is off because then we don't want it on. Let's go to modifiers. Here's our path constraint. That's the one we're going to use path. And we're going to hold on the control key so it shows multiple. So it means there's multiple objects being constrained to this path okay so let's click on that and they all move to the first vertex on the path now we have eight of these guys and they're all at the same point right now and we want them is to have them spaced evenly along the curve we know that the path constraint uh, has a path 
uh, offset value that we can use and it's uh, it's measured in percent so you can always put any object at a certain distance on the path based on that percent where 100% it's a full complete uh, uh, movement on the entire path so what we need to do is divide 100 between 8 divisions and that's 12.5 so that's the va the offset value we need to use so the first um, item the first locator we're gonna leave it leave it as it at its current position okay so we're gonna take the second one and go to its path constraint and enter a path offset of 12.5 and that moves it to this position we'll take the next one and say this guy is gonna be 12.5 times 2 and that moves it twice the distance okay so we're gonna do that with every one of these guys so 12.5 times 3 and he gets moved over here and then this guy is going to be uh, 12.5 times 4 the next one is 12.5 times 5 12.5 times 6 and the last one is 12.5 times 7 so there they are our locators are now evenly spaced on our path okay now let me collapse these guys and let's make them uh, slightly smaller <clears throat> perfect now we're gonna do exactly the same but for locators on this other path so let's start by again bringing in another locator we're going to organize this a little bit better and actually what i can do is i'm going to take the uh, belt riders and i'm going to parent them to the curve that they're riding that's okay it's just for organization purposes they don't really need to uh, that doesn't mean that uh, they're going to inherit transform from the curve or anything. Um, so we're good. So let's take this new locator. And I'm going to call him uh, up vector center belt rider 0. Okay. And again, I'm going to duplicate this one a few times. Two, three, four, five, eight. Uh, let's very quickly rename these. <clears throat> zero six, zero seven and zero eight perfect and again let's select all of them and then select the curve all right and let's again give them a path constraint oops i forgot to hold on uh, hold down the control key so it does it for all of them perfect and let's again enter the appropriate values here 12.5 so you'll see it move there and then the next one 12.5 times 2 12.5 times 3 uh, times 4 times 5 times 6 and times 7 all right and let's again change their display attributes 
And because these guys are up vectors, you know that I like to use my little pyramid shape. So let's make them small pyramids. And I'm going to set them to Y. So they're all looking up. Okay. Lastly, what we need to do is set the up vectors for our riders. So I'm going to take first these guys and parent them under their own curve. And let's uh, open up the belt riders hierarchy again. And we're going to go one by one. So this is one, uh, two. You just have to be careful uh, because uh, Moto tends to do this. Once you uh, uh, move stuff in the items list, it tends to change the order that things were in. So you you might want to reorder them uh, just to uh, make sure that they become easy to find. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Uh, so okay, let's start with the first one. I'm gonna select its constraint. Shift select the up vector and assign as an up vector and you should get your blue dotted line. Let's do the second one. It's this guy. Select the constraint, select the up vector, assign. Perfect. Then we do the third one. And we continue down the list. <coughs> Excuse me. Six is that guy. Seven is this guy. And eight, it's this guy. All right, they're all, they all have their up vectors assigned. So that means that no matter what the character is doing, as long as this curve, well, both curves are following the movements of the character, then they won't have any flipping or strange things going on. So that's cool. All right. Now, what we need to do is these guys are only riding these, these curves, right? They're not really um, doing anything yet that will deform anything. So uh, we need to somehow transform these curves. And um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use weight containers, okay? And uh, I'm going to connect uh, one container per vertex on the curve, which means we need eight. So our belt is going to have eight controls to deform it. Um, so let's let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is create the locators. So let's create one and bring it over here under the belt controls parent locator that we created all right and now i'm going to match its position to over here because i know that there's a vertex right there and to be uh, more accurate about this i'm going to actually let yeah let's do this the right way let's reset its position and I'm going to move it off actually somewhere just that it's easier to see what's going on. Uh, and I'm going to set my snapping to use a vertex instead of the grid. So I'm going to be snapping to any vertex I find in space. And I want to snap to vertices on my curve. So let's use the move tool to snap to looks like uh, it's having some trouble projecting on the curve yeah I guess I'm just going to not make this any more painful for myself and just match it that's gonna be better there you go now I'm gonna duplicate this guy uh, a few more times Let's rename it first. Uh, control center 
belt zero one and let's uh, let's duplicate them one two three well until we have eight six seven and eight and let's match the uh, these guys and actually you know what let's match the entire transform and the reason why I'm gonna match the entire transform is because I want them to have also the same orientation so I can, I can more easily pull them out uh, from the character you're gonna see what that is in a second oh no that's not the guy I actually wanted it's this guy let's move him out and match him uh, where is the right there it's right there so who is this uh, sometimes moto makes things a little bit difficult to select oh it's the second one yeah I'm going to move this guy off so this guy will be matched to our first little locator over there <coughs> this guy to this one over here this guy to this one the next one to our friend over here and then this guy to the one over here this guy to this guy this guy to this guy and the last guy to this one over here all right now I'm gonna make them more into something that can actually be handled with ease so let's change their shape to planes Okay, and they're going to be facing the y-axis um, like so and now I'm going to move them in local space off a little bit and let's check this out in uh, in the shaded view so just they're easy to select and that should be uh, enough, I guess. All right. Now we're going to zero everything, all their transforms. And they're good. Those are our controls. I just have to rename them. very quickly okay perfect now these guys again are going to deform the curve via uh, via weight containers so we need to create a few containers in this case eight one per vertex on the curve so let's go to um, the formers create our containers one two three four five six seven and eight okay now we have our containers here so it's time to rig this up we're gonna go to our schematic view and we're gonna do that in the props workspace okay and let's bring in our containers I'm gonna take care of renaming renaming them later on so one two uh, three four five six 
7 and 8. All right. And let's bring in the curve. We don't need the matrix compose node. And let's also bring in our other curve. This is the belt riders. And where is the op vectors? And select it. Why? Well, because we need to deform both. We cannot deform just one. We need to deform both so that they actually follow the character properly and the up vectors are always aligned. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, wire all these guys uh, so that they take this curve and also this curve. Okay, and now we need to add the points to each weight container. So I'm going to use the same order that I was using uh, before. Let's go to wire. I'm going to select the first curve and the second curve. Oops, with control. <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's go to uh, vertex component mode and I'm going to select these two vertices. Select this container and say at points. Okay. I'm going to select these two points, select this next container, and say add points. I'm going to select these two and add points to that one. Then select the next two vertices and add those points. Then select the next two vertices and add those points. Then the next and add those, the next two, and add those, and finally the last two points, and add those points. I'm going to rename these guys later on, okay? So now that they're part of the containers, we need to add our um, influences to each container. So let's do that. Uh, the deform item, general influence. Let's do that for the next container. I'm going to need more space with these guys. Sorry. Uh, yeah, here we are about to finish. And the last container. There we go. So now we have all of our influences. Now, what is going to be... Uh, deforming the uh, our curve well um, I could use directly the controls which is what I guess I'm going to do I could create other locators to deform it and then have those constrained to the controls but uh, yeah the controls are going to be the ones directly responsible for deforming um, the curve so let's bring these guys in and uh, I'm gonna make some space in between all these guys so just that the uh, the controls can fit and uh, let's move this guy up this guy up okay now I need to place these guys at their appropriate um, container so if 
for this guy it's gonna be this guy for this guy it's gonna be this guy there we go okay I'm gonna wire everything up I'm gonna do that in setup mode so let's wire this guy in wire this guy in this guy this guy this guy this guy let's wire each locator to its corresponding influence and once we're done let's test it out there you go both curves are being deformed Okay, and if I take the entire parent locator, the whole rig comes along with it. All right, so this is pretty much um, the rigging for our belt system. This is what we're gonna we're going to use to control how the belt is going to behave. And now we need to actually work on. Um, under the formations for it. So we're going to do that in the next video.